are excited to be here. We are actually doing the second video on artist Lois Milo Jones. Um, so if you didn't see our first one, jump over to that to learn a little bit more about her or go to one of these places where you can find out more about her, hear her own words on her interview with Good Morning America or go to one of these, these sites where you can um, read about her. Really, really awesome person and artist. Um, her artistic career spanned more than 70 years. So we have um, just some great work by her. And then she was also an educator that taught generations of, of new and inspired African-American artists. Um, some of, some like Alma Thomas, one of my all time favorites, just love her. So really, really inspiring woman. Um, and today, for our project, we are gonna take a look at some of her portraits. Now she did lots and lots of other stuff because remember she painted and created for over 70 years. Uh, but we're just gonna focus on the portraits today for this project because that's what we are gonna work on. So take a look at some of these portraits. Mm -hmm. And as you do, I want you to think in your head, what? what is the same about them? And what is different? Now an artist that creates for so many years, their style and their skill level changes over time or their focus, what they're trying to, what, what they think is most important in a painting may change, um, their inspiration may change. And you can see it as you look through their pictures. So as you look at these portraits, think, can I tell that the same person painted them? What is similar? Is her use of line similar? Is her use of color? Are her brush strokes similar? And what is different? Do these look like any portraits I've seen by any other artist? What do I like about them? What do I think was successful? What would I perhaps do differently? Just think of some of those different questions. Think about how realistic is it? Do I think she was trying to be realistic? Or was she trying to show expression or mood? What feeling do I get when I look at these pictures? And again, compare and contrast them. Lots of different portraits. So we're going to go back to this original self-portrait um, from 1937. And when I looked at this, one thing jumped out at me right away. And that's that when I was in a painting class in college, I was told you never put a black outline around something. Do not just outline your face because in real life there's no black outline around your face. Use shading to show the edges and contours and everything. Um, but take a look at her painting. She used black lines. And that's the great thing about rules in art that you should learn them because they help you create better art. But part of the reason why you learn them is because you learn also which ones you can break to make your painting better. So there are rules she follows. She understands rules of proportion, how to, what, what size the eyes should be in relation to the nose and the mouth. Have you ever looked at a portrait or tried to draw somebody's face and been like, oh, that doesn't look like that person or maybe not like a person at all because it's out of proportion. So rules of proportion, she follows. There are other rules she follows, but this rule about no black outline, she doesn't worry about that. And it really adds to her paintings. I, I, I really like that. So for our project today, we are gonna do that black outline. So this is called an art contour drawing. And it's basically where you do the outline of something. You're not worrying about shading. You're not worrying about colors. You're just doing an outline, but on paper. And that's what my kiddos on either side of me have been working on. Can I show this real quick? So to do a contour drawing, this is what dude's been working on right here of his sister. Um, you're going to just worry about the lines. You're going to basically, you're tracing the person's face with your eyes and having your pencil follow that line so that you get the outline. And by outline, I mean, I don't mean you just do the face. You obviously you do the features and stuff too. Just mean that you're not adding the shading and the color. So there are a couple of fun ways that you can practice this idea of that you're tracing it with your eyes and using your pencil. One, if you're doing somebody else, is actually you could get a picture frame, preferably one that isn't wired yet, and take out the back so it just has the glass. Now, here, scoot forward a little bit so you're in the, in the shot. I can hold this up. Easier if you have someone else hold it up, but you get the idea. So here, look at the screen, come over. So I'm gonna hold this up and I'm gonna look right at him and literally trace through here. Now use, you know, an Expo dry erase marker so that it erases, don't use a Sharpie on, on a picture frame. 
but I'm gonna trace it. I'm wiggling all around, but if you had a way to prop it up, make it work a little bit better. I am just literally tracing his features here, which helps me practice the idea of tracing it with your eyes and drawing it with your pencil. You could also do this at a window. Have your brother or sister or mom or dad or somebody stand on the other side of the window, stand outside, and you trace around him. Oops, dropped it. Oh, forgot his other eyebrow. And see there, I have a nice gesture drawing. Not, sorry, not gesture drawing, contour drawing of him. Practicing that idea that with a contour drawing, we trace with our eyes and draw with our pencil. If you want to do a contour drawing of yourself, go take a look in a mirror or bring the mirror to you. So go into your bathroom to the mirror or bring a mirror to you. Have some, if someone can help you hold it steady, that's nice. Again, in the bathroom on the wall, you don't have to worry about that. That's gonna stay nice and steady. Dry erase marker, not a Sharpie. And you're gonna try and hold as still as you can. can. It might help if you squint one eye as you try to really focus on the line and you're just tracing yourself in the mirror, which is kind of fun, isn't it? Just tracing. This way you're not gonna, you're not gonna get those proportions wrong, are you? You're not gonna end up with a nose that's twice as big as it should be. Whoops. I'm tracing myself, but I've squinted one eye, so I'm gonna look like I'm winking at you. So again, do this with a dry erase marker, not a Sharpie. And then, the great thing is you can do this as many times as you want. Go ahead and grab, grab a paper towel, erase it, and go for it again. And then you stand back and go, oh, okay, I see it, it's me. You see that? Oh, it's hard for you to see that, but it's there. <laughs> so, do you wanna do yourself? Dry erase marker on a mirror. If you wanna practice the idea with someone else, go to the window or grab a picture frame with just the glass in it. Hold that steady and trace the other person. Then, transfer that idea onto paper. Can I show yours? Sorry, show my so Mary's over here, she's drawing her brother. Again, she's not worrying about shading. Oh, she did a little bit right here. <laughs> that's, just, that's, just that's just the shirt, she says. Um, but she's just outlining his face. Contour drawing helps you really practice your observational skills. You're not drawing what you think is there, you're drawing what you really see is there. Um, and that's really important, especially when drawing people because it is, it's legit hard to draw people because if you draw one eye, like, you know, a little bit too big, they suddenly look like an alien. If you're doing a landscape and you make a tree a little too big, okay, the tree grew, no biggie. So this is a great practice to really sharpen those observational skills, contour drawing. Don't stress about the colors, the shading, the painting, just do the outlining. Um, and then you can decide like Lois Milo Jones, if you're gonna keep those outlines in your painting or if you're gonna shade them out of the way. Either one, it's totally up to you because that's the great thing about art is you're in charge. Your paintings are like your own little world that you get to create. So have fun with this, hope you enjoyed this. And again, please pop over to one of these sites and learn more about Lois Milo Jones. Really awesome lady, awesome artist, um, really cool, cool stuff. So thank you and happy arting.